Hi everyone, tonight we're going to be going over an A1990 that has 5 volts and no amp draw on the USB. This is a 2018-19 uh, 15 inch MacBook Pro. Uh, we're going to go over what can cause this issue, what the issue with this device is, and how you can fix it. As you can see here, we have 5 volts and 0 amps on the USB amp meter, so let's jump right into this. Let's get the bottom case off and let's have a look. Bottom case of the device is off. We're going to start with a brief uh, visual inspection of the board for any signs of um, liquid damage, physical damage, anything like that. Uh, main areas I want to check are going to be around the USB-C controllers, um, which are look pretty much unremarkable. Another thing is, is whenever these devices are liquid damaged, um, this LDI right here uh, near the vent will often be uh, triggered as well, and it's not looks pretty clean. Um, so we're going to go ahead and quickly rule out if this MacBook is in DFU state. So a lot of times these T2 and probably the M1 machines are going to suffer from um, being in a recovery mode uh, from T2 corruption. So usually when you have T2 corruption, you can get 5 volts or 20 volts. There's usually no amp draw um, and you will characteristically have PP5VS5 missing. That is very, very common. So one quick check is plug it in um, and we will go ahead and check PP5VS5. If it's missing, then this is most likely going to be uh, needing to be recovered in DFU mode. So let me go pull up my board, board view right here for an A20 or whatever it is. It's upside down. Eight two zero zero one zero four one BRD file, and we are going to measure PP five VS five. So this is if you ever get one of these devices liquid damaged, I mean not liquid damaged, five volts, zero zero amps, twenty volts, zero amps. Always check that. Um, another thing, we, of course, we got to check um, uh, three V three G three hot and stuff like that. But that's just a quick. Um, indicator there and another thing we could check is also pp bus g3 out i would actually recommend um uh checking pp bus g3 out first i mean it's 10 o'clock at night cut me a little bit of slack so let's check pp bus right here and pp bus is actually zero volts so pp bus being zero volts changes this a little bit so let's unplug our battery and let's check uh if there's a short on pp bus that would be the first thing to do here and there is a 7.8 ohm short to ground on PP bus. Now I wonder what that issue would be. I wonder what would cause PP bus G3 hot um, to be shorted. Well, at this point we got to pull the board out um, because we can't really do anything with the board in the enclosure safely. So we're going to take the board out. We're going to give it another visual inspection on the other side, see if there's any pop caps, anything like that. Um, and then we will start by injecting voltage. We might have a CPU MOSFET issue, so we'll start really low on the voltage, like. 1.3 volts or so um, and then go from there so again i want to reiterate to check for dfu mode measure pp bus g3 hot if you have 12.2 volts on pp bus g3 hot if you have 3v3 g3 hot um, and 5 volts on usb and pp3 v3 s5 is missing plug it into another macbook with apple configurator 2 with a usb cable and see if it is in dfu mode and then uh, click advanced options and revive device uh, from the menu in Apple Configurator 2, and that will probably solve your problem. Let's go ahead and take this board out and go from there. System board is out. Let's go ahead and, and uh, have a look at it, but everything looks pretty clean. There's no liquid that I could see, but let's take a look under the microscope because that is a lot more telling than the eyes are. And let's see if we could find what is causing our short. So, Oftentimes it's going to be tantalum capacitors like these. They're very common to short. Sometimes you'll be able to see them visually. Sometimes you won't. Um, you got to look for like solder balls popping out the sides and cracks and stuff like that. But this looks pretty decent. I don't see any. Um, that would be the issue here. There's no obvious signs that anybody else has been here. No liquid damage. Nothing like that. Um, USB-C controller area, unremarkable other than dust. Let's go on this side again. Nope. 
All right, so here's going to be my diagnosis process, or my diagnostic process, if you would. So the first thing I want to do, let's make sure our meter is reading correctly, and it is. It's reading about 3.7 ohms through the leads. Um, now, that's important because we kind of have to subtract that uh, to get our actual reading. So we have, let's see. Okay, now we're reading direct short to ground. So this is a direct short to ground. Uh, one other thing is we need to check between VCOR and PP bus. Um, and let's see what our resistance is there. And that's three ohms. So basically that's fine for the CPU. So the chances of this being a shorted CPU VCOR MOSFET are actually fairly low because it's not we if if it was we would have um, so we would have a direct short between those because it would be reading the essentially the same line since they're shorted together. So what we are going to do now is we are going to inject a little bit of voltage in this board and get some thermal images and go from there. So I'm going to get my DC uh, power supply lead. Now, when I was starting, when I was a moron, I mean, I'm still a moron now, I'm just a little bit less of a moron. Uh, what I would do is I would inject 12 volts at um, 5 amps to PP bus. This is a bad thing to do and you do not want to do that. So I would recommend you start at one volt and go up from there. If you're reading five amps at one volt, great. Use that, find the short. The reason why I say that is sometimes you will get shorts on the CPU MOSFETs and you could turn an otherwise fixable board into a dead board because you do not want to ram 12 volts into the CPU or any more than you have to. So start at one volt, go up from there until you could read the short. Also, I highly recommend you spend the money and get a thermal imager. It doesn't have to be a good one. Just get any thermal imager you can get um, because it'll make your life a whole lot easier. I know a lot of people say no on that, but trust me when I, when I say it will. Um, it will make your diagnostic process a whole lot easier on shorted uh, devices. Now, you may wonder why am I doing this to two? Well, it's the same line. They use two fuses here. I kind of want a little more solder, but I think that'll be all right. Let's up our voltage to one volt. We're at one volt. Clip our alligator clip on. And we're pulling a good three amps at one volt. So that's a pretty substantial short. I have my thermal imager, which you guys can't see, but I am looking at the board and looks like we have a little bit of heat coming from this top area over here so I wonder what this is let's see is it on this side or is it on the other side sometimes it can be hard to tell so I'm gonna lift the board up let's see so you can see there's an I don't know if you guys can see that but there's an area getting hot over here maybe it'll focus it's kind of hard to see it's really hard to see actually um, it's reading about 70 80 degrees 90 degrees and on this side it's reading about 81 degrees so it is indeed over here in this area so now that narrowed our area down we know our area that our problem is in and now we can uh, hunt it down so what we're going to do is just look visually what do we see do we see anything that could be of concern here and yes i do i do not like the looks of this capacitor if you see that capacitor has let's see looks a little bit discolored looks like it has a crack in it that might be the issue that might not be the issue so what i'm going to do is get a little alcohol on a q-tip rub it on there and see if it fizzles away on that cap and that will narrow down our problem let's see what's well, getting hot here and what do you know that's going to be our problem right there just to prove it i'm going to up the voltage now to three volts because we know where our problem is and you can see very clearly that this capacitor is our problem so turn off our power supply let's unsolder our um, lead here from our board and we'll touch up the the uh, the fuse a little bit so it looks nice and pretty like it wasn't touched let's get our hot air on let's get this one cap off nice pair of tweezers and every pair of tweezers I grab is not the pair I'm looking for good 
pair of tweezers. It's off. Let's get a little bit more flux in here because I... Grab a 1990 donor. I don't even like to add solder because you don't really need to and it kind of looks more OEM without it because there's already plenty there as long as you use a little bit of flux to put it back on you're totally fine Let's let that cool down for a minute let's clean up this area because I never like when I see boards with flux all over them there's no need to ultrasonic anything like this, just clean your mess. Over here, clean it up a bit. Time for reassembly now. Should be good to go. Our board is back in the enclosure. Let's go ahead and plug it in, see what it pulls, and see, most importantly, if it boots. So we have 5 volts. Um, let's see, 5 volts, 0 0.1 milliamps. 20 volts, 15 milliamps. 20 volts, 3 milliamps. We have fan spin, and we have an Apple logo, as you can see. I do not want to reveal this customer's information. This is a super important customer. But we can see, see we have a progress bar and an Apple logo. So this should be fixed. Let's just make sure it fully boots in the OS. Our touch bar just came on. Um, again, I cannot reveal what's on the screen, but it does work and it does boot. So this is fixed. We'll put it through our normal testing, um, you know, stress test, charging test, everything like that. But this is good to go. And this is a fixed MacBook data saved, MacBook saved, full functionality. We're good to go. Thank you for watching. And I hope... Um, this helps you if you're another repair shop. I hope this helps you fix your own problem if you come across one of these devices doing this. So, thank you for watching again.